Good afternoon and welcome to your first virtual day of science. Uh, if everybody could please have a seat so that I can take attendance, we'll begin shortly. Just kidding. Uh, we're continuing our unit on change over time right now uh, with the first topic called gradualism versus punctuated equilibrium. Uh, just as a quick recap of the things that we've already studied, you may remember Charles Darwin. He was a young naturalist, meaning he was just a scientist who was interested in the natural world, who earned a spot on the, the boat, the HMS Beagle, as they traveled around the world making maps. Uh, most of his most interesting discoveries came from the Galapagos Islands, where he primarily studied the finches and noticed the differences and similarities in between those uh, varieties of species which were present on the various islands. Here is where he came up with his uh, most famous conclusions. Uh, he finally decided that perhaps not all species were created in their present form uh, and instead maybe they're all related to a distant ancestor and a bit more like cousins. He called his theory descent with modification, and today we primarily refer to that as the theory of evolution. What made Darwin so special though was that he not only just thought of this idea, he also explained how it could be happening. Uh, Darwin had a mechanism for how evolution could happen or how species could change uh, over time, and he called that mechanism natural selection. In order for natural selection to work, a couple things have to be true. The first one is that individuals must inherit their traits from their parents. Um, this is something that we've studied in our previous units and I believe was relatively obvious even to Darwin and the people of his time. Secondly, you need variation in your population. That means that even siblings from the same parents are different and throughout the population, you have quite a lot of differences in the individuals. And third, and possibly most importantly, you need competition. This means that there's not enough resources to go around and individuals must compete. Therefore, in the game of life, there are some winners and some losers. This means also that some of the traits are favorable and other traits are less favorable. Now let's get to our new learning for today. We are looking at two different models of evolution. The first one is called gradualism, and it's the model of evolution that Darwin and almost anybody who subscribes to his theories would agree with. It means that over many, 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 many generations with tiny, slight changes in each generation over thousands or more likely millions of years, species can change quite a lot. Um, gradualism is definitely something you can see around you today, even if you just look at things like the development of purebred horses or different varieties of dog breeds. Um, the second model of evolution, though, is called punctuated equilibrium, and I wouldn't believe it if I had not seen it with my own eyes. There's even today in our present world, some examples of punctuated equilibrium that are too obvious to ignore. Uh, one of them we'll look at next week is involving stickleback fish. And the one we're gonna look at today has to do with elephants. You may know that the elephants in Africa are famous for their beautiful tusks, but um, these tusks are made of a material called ivory, which is valued for its beauty and medicinal purposes and because of that elephants are facing a very grave danger in the form of poaching. Poaching is the process where people come and not only do they steal the tusks of the elephant but at the same time they also kill the elephant. Obviously this is a very intense pressure on the elephants and we'll look at a case study today to see if they could possibly evolve in order to save themselves. So since we're already 
having my phone out and taking the time to record. I didn't want to miss the opportunity to see you all face to face and say hi. I'm still here in Kathmandu. I will be flying in a couple hours, about five or six hours, hopefully, flying through Abu Dhabi and then onwards to London. So please pray for me and I will see you all in my next installment of Miss Hill's class, but online.